Good morning, everybody. Hello, Welcome Mike to the Carson. Service Alliance podcast. Did we plan this again? Look at the shirts. Look. Oh, at I didn't even. You know what? Mine's Service Alliance group shirt. Mine's my office help in uh, <laughs> Real Tree. <laughs> Real Tree. <laughs> yeah, my office help sponsored by Real Tree. I better not say that. <laughs> oh boy. I think mine, yeah. mine is sponsored by Nike. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> wow! Do it. This service alliance group really has taken off. They got Nike as a sponsor. Nice. Yeah, you know, <laughs> whatever it takes, we'll take on any of them little guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yes. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing That's very, good. very well. That's good. That's good. Anybody uh, joining in? Saying how I'm waiting for Saul to pop in here and say, "Hey." Nothing yet. So, no. so I would. We got Adam saying hi. Hi, Adam. Hello, Adam. Jeremy. Thank, Thank you, you to Mike, Mike. For the SEO magic man. 25% jump in website traffic. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm waiting. Month. Go ahead. Oh, this month. Yeah, this month he jumped up pretty decent. So cool. How do I find that out on my newly designed website from ITD Web Design? Uh, you got to hire me so I can start doing SEO and start tracking. <laughs> gotcha. So it's not just about getting a website one and done. It's also about continuing on with the SEO. Exactly. And Jeremy uh -huh. knows that more than anybody because he's increased every single month since he signed on with me. Oh, that's pretty so, cool. From zero to hero. Zero to hero. <laughs> I think this is David. Good morning. <clears throat> Hello. If not, I'm sorry. Hello, Orcon. Orkin. Orkin. <laughs> it's I've got a guy who does all my embroidery. His name is Urcon. So yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's pronounced very similar. And I probably just tore it all up. <laughs> sorry about <laughs> that. If I did. Oh boy. Yep. So well, we're gonna we're gonna open with a couple of things. I got a couple of stories, short stories to tell you. And Jason just got back from PSA. So then he's got some stuff to talk about. Sure. So let me, let me open with one of them right now. One of the three. So a service tech, his decrepit old service van broke down right as he ended his, his day. He didn't know what he was going to do, how he was going to do do any of his calls the next day so he calls his boss and his boss said i'll just pick you up in the morning so the next morning the owner of the service company drove to his employee's house to pick him up for work the owner pulls up in his own personal service vehicle which was a brand new shiny pickup truck that he just paid 75 grand for the previous day. Nope. This thing was loaded with every option imaginable. He even had a really nice custom wrap on it already. So his employee comes out of the house. He's like, wow, this truck is beautiful. Wish I had one of these. So the business owner says, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And if you set your goals really high and you work really, really, really hard in the next quarter, I can get my wife one of these too. Jeez. <laughs> Ouch. That's painful. All right. <laughs> this didn't pull up in a limousine. I would have pulled yeah. up a limousine like, hey, let me take you to lunch. Exactly. <laughs> spoil my yeah that, that's a crappy leader dude i gotta say <laughs> yeah we're talking about leadership today so i wanted to open with how not to be a leader <laughs> right i don't know about that man i guess that's why they call it a joke <laughs> all right since we're talking about leader mm. let me open in prayer i got a i got a prayer that i actually am going to read and I thought it was extremely fitting for what hmm. we're talking about today. All right. All right. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for appointing leaders throughout time 
and in my specific sphere. I pray for them today. Guide them by the wisdom of your word and help them to navigate this sinful world. Give them the courage to speak the truth in love. Show them what it means to be servant leaders. You say in Matthew 20, 26, not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be, wants to become great among you must be your servant. Help my leaders to be known for the way that they participate and meet the needs of those around them. Please be with those who have led for a long time. It's easy to want to coast towards the end of the position, but we pray that you would pour out extra favor and zeal onto them to be used in mighty ways. Help them not to give up on the mission which you've called them for in this life. Please be with those who desire to give up because it's hard. Help them to find inner strength in you. Give them all that they need to accomplish your tasks. Enable them to walk by the spirit and not by the flesh. Help them to set a good example for those around them. We pray for those just now entering leadership roles. Keep them humble in this endeavor. Give them the confidence to walk with you into this new season. Lord, help them to be lifetime learners as they lead. Give them understanding and wisdom beyond their years. Help them to commit their plans to you, provide humble attitudes for them, and give them courage to ask wise counsel and learn from those who have gone before them. And they walk in the path which you have called them in every way that shows total glory to your name and not their own. Amen. Wow. That was like, like a commencement prayer at a graduation or so. That was really good. Yeah, I, I, I read that and I was like, wow, I need, I want to read this prayer. I'm you know, that's better than anything I could come up with. And it just fit. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. You got our verse for the day. I do. I think it, it's 11, a good one. 28 through 30. I think it's a good one. Um, all right. Matthew 28 and Matthew 11. See, I got this confused. Or, I'm sorry. Matthew 11. 11, 28 through 30 says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As New King James Version, by the way. My so, yoke is I mean, easy, burden is light. Hmm. everybody's heard of this verse, right? <clears throat> well, yes. I just got back from a men's retreat a couple weeks, a couple weekends ago, and this verse was brought up by the pastor and he explained something that completely fit leadership. When Jesus said this, there's, there's one word that really stood out and it's take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy. What did he mean by that? So you, you in order to know what he really meant, you got to understand who he was speaking to. So Correct. he was speaking to the religious leaders of the time because all the people, they were, they were weighed down by the rules set in place by the religious leaders. Okay. And they were just weary and they can't possibly live up to all the expectations. And they were just tired of trying. Okay. But he was speaking mostly to a farming community. Mm -hmm. And I did, and I never realized that. Okay. So they used to plow with their oxen back then. Right. Yeah. So when they, when they had a young oxen that they wanted to train, what they did is they put the yoke, a double yoke 
on both of them side by side. Yep. And they put the young one with an older experienced oxen that knew how to plow straight and, and knew the commands and was just groomed and trained and had been doing it a long time. And because the young one was yoked with him side by side, that's how the young ones learned. Hmm. And that's how the young ones, um, they're not, they're not as strong. So the older one walked with them and they both wore the yoke and they both pulled the plow together. And that's how, that's how leadership works. That's a pretty cool story. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was really, really good. Um, and that, and that's how the young one becomes stronger, becomes more confident and it learns how to plow yeah, and walk straight. So I thought that was really, really good. And I started thinking last night, you know, like what are some other similar good leadership qualities and, and stories. And I got, I got a friend named Ted Buffington lives down in Texas. Um, great guy. He was like my oldest friend that I had never met. Me and this guy would talk for hours on the phone back in the day. And he's a mindset expert. And he actually mentored Tony Robbins when Tony Robbins was just starting out. Yeah. So he was he was the Tony Robbins before that was a thing, you know. Um this this guy, he's an he's an author. He was actually in the movie Romancing the Stone with Danny DeVito and Michael um got his name. That's he was been the star a of the movie. Um, but anyway, if you if you remember back in in the I think it was early 90s or mid 90s, Romancing the Stone came out. There's a scene where Danny DeVito is it, at this like tribe. Michael Douglas. Mm-hmm. This tribe of of indigenous people. And they want him to walk across a bed of hot coals. Well, my friend Ted Buffington, he's the original firewalker. And he would teach people, you know, he would actually at these conferences have a set of hot coals set up, a whole bed of them. And he would do, he'd walk across them, you know, and that was part of his presentation and and teaching um, for his leadership training. And as he's telling me all this, I I couldn't believe it, but he, he basically told me a story that really stuck with me. He says, Mike, I'm out there. I got this bed of hot coals. It's like four feet wide by like, I don't know, 15, 12, 15 feet long. And he says, you know, while I'm giving my presentation inside, all this is being burned for about an hour outside. Mm -hmm. And the coals get burned down real good. So it's, it's really, really hot. And he says, so I take all these people, a couple hundred people, we all go outside into the parking lot where this bed of hot coals is. And he walks across the coals and shows yep. them that he can actually do it without burning and scorching his feet. Yep. So he does that. And then he tells the crowd, how many of you believe that I can take someone across the hot coals with me. And he looks out and everyone's like, yeah, I believe it. Yeah, sure. And he's like, seriously, how many of you believe? And the crowd gets louder and they're like, yeah. So he's getting everybody hyped up and they all believe that he can do it. And then he says, which one of you is it going to be? Yeah. And the crowd goes silent and nobody. <laughs> nobody says a word right and he says 
You just told me that you believe that I could do it. So which one of you is a true believer? Again, the crowd's silent. And then finally, the guy who um, was in charge of the conference steps forward and says, I'll do it. And Ted said, okay, I'm going to do it with you. We're both going to walk across the coals together. So yeah. they went side by side and he coached them all the way across and neither of them burned their feet. And that's the example of true leadership is walking through the fire. This is good. With, <laughs> with someone, not just walking through and saying, now you do it. Not just saying, oh, this is how you do it. Now you go. Not walking through it and say, see what I did? I'm sure you can do the same thing. But if you're walking together with someone through that fire, through the pain, through the learning, and putting that yoke on with them, it makes that burden light. Mm -hmm. So those are, those are the two stories that I thought were really good. Yeah. And that really, really applied to what we're talking about today. Yeah. That's really good. I, uh, I'm taking some notes here because we've got our uh, state of the union next Wednesday and we're going to be talking about that today in our leadership meeting and getting the planning going for it. And, uh, we had one direction that we're going with it and this really kind of fits in with it. So I have actually done firewalks several times. I've walked on glass. Uh, I've done a lot of this kind of, you know, Tony Robbins type of stuff. And uh, I'm not going to get a fire going for our state of the union address, but you know, that gives me <laughs> some things to kind of point towards, you know, <laughs> it, it is dangerous. And I, and I, yeah, because he told me how it worked. He, he told me, he says, you, you got to use oak. Yeah. And, and the secret to it is to let the fire burn down and let all the coals burn down yeah. to where it's all that's left is charcoal mm. because the layer on top is the coolest part. He says the coals way down at the bottom are the hottest. Yeah. So he says that, you know, when you, when you see a fire burning and you see like the black you know, the black colors on top of the coals, that's because that's the coolest. And he said, so that's what you're stepping on. And he says, obviously you can't hold your foot there for very long, but as long as you're moving, as soon as you lift your foot up, it starts to cool down. Yeah. Hmm. And he said that you have to use Oak. It has to be a, a really good hardwood in order for it to work. Because he did say, he says, I had to supervise every single fire pit that I had to walk across. Because I yeah. learned one time I trusted other people to do it, and they got pine. Yep. Ooh. And, yeah, they used pine instead of oak. Well, what does pine have in it? Sap. So the pitch from... The wood, he walked across, and it stuck to his feet. And he got third-degree burns on his feet because of it. And he's like, Mike, I've done hundreds of these walks, and that's the only one I've ever been burned on. Hmm. And I had to go to the hospital. <laughs> that's not good. See, I didn't know all that part. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was pretty interesting. So anyway, yeah. I digress. Squirrel. Good stuff. <laughs> No, this is good. This is good. We got some more people that joined on. So yeah, I see that. Uh we got Miss Ward. I got to join in with her last weekend or last Friday, I think it was. Finally got to be on the show with her. Gaspar or Gasper. <laughs> <laughs> Saul. There he is. I got to get rid of this banner that's popped up here. All right. So we were, you, you said the word servant leader in your prayer earlier. 
And that reminded me of something. I was at an IMC with John Maxwell a couple years ago. And he always, on a, I think this was on Tuesday night, as we was getting wrap up, ready to wrap up. He goes, now, we have people of all different walks of faith in in our meeting. So, I mean, you have Islam, you have Muslim, or you have Islam, you have Buddhist, you have Christians. I mean, you have Catholics, Baptists. I mean, you have all walks of life, every religion, different faith that was in this room. There was 1,700 or so people in there. And he goes, I just want to invite you all tomorrow morning. I am going to be having a, uh, what do you call it? Um, a spiritual session, I think is what he called it. I have to remember the exact words, but he goes, and I just want you all to know, I am going to be talking about Jesus tomorrow, but I'm going to be talking about him as the greatest servant leader that ever walked the face of this earth. And so that piqued everybody's interest, you know? So the next morning, this was not part of the IMC. This was in addition to, right? This was your freebie. So the next morning, great music. They had a guy and, and his wife do music. And uh, he goes into uh, talking about Jesus as the greatest servant leader ever. And he stopped and he goes, you know, I normally don't do this, but he goes, I just feel right now that it's a good time to do an altar call. And I'm telling you what, just I'm getting teared up just thinking about it because it was just the simplicity of I'm not here to preach to you or at you. I just want to tell you about somebody who I think is a great servant leader. And I kid you not, there was probably two or 300 people that went up and accepted Christ their Savior because of him talking about Jesus as a servant leader. That's awesome. That was a pretty cool moment. I'm I mean, you. Jesus was the perfect example of, you know, a servant leader, like you said. I was yep. thinking about that, too. He walked alongside people. Yeah, you know, and he he coached them and walked walked with people, yep. you know, and and still does, right? Yep. Um, Gasper says that John Maxwell is going to be preaching at his church on Sunday. Wait, where where do you live at? He's down. You in must Florida. be in Florida. <laughs> I was gonna yeah. say, I know uh, John lives down in Florida. So, <laughs> for those of you not familiar with John Maxwell, he used to be a pastor, and now he. He's a leadership coach. Yeah. He's um, a leadership coaching company. Yeah. So the Maxwell <laughs> leadership team and uh, been part of that for, I don't know, three years or so. I'm still last going through it. Yeah. The last podcast I had Macy and Missy on, they're part of his team. They are program advisors. Um, Macy's my program advisor, but. If you ever want to just, I joined it just to be able to become a better leader in my own company. And it is basically helped me to also be able to help others. And I, I think that's John's whole point was that, and I don't know why we're getting off and talking about John, but he, uh, he was very, uh, what's the word, weary about loaning his name out to people. You're going to be part of the John Maxwell leadership team. And he goes, man, that, that was really hard for me to let go of. But he goes, the kind of people that are coming in here, I would trust with my own family, you know? So it, it's really neat. So think about that in your own business. Who are, who are you hiring in your own business that you trust with your name? You know, whether your name is actually on the truck or not, it's your name. You know, when it was service detectives, even though my name wasn't on it, people knew service detectives as Jason Shadowin, you know? Yep. So, and people know my office help as Shana Shadow. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, I'm the same way in my business. It's, it's my people need to know that I'm responsible, you know, and yeah. I'm, it's my name on every, every site we build and every project we do. So, yep. So what other stories you got today? You're full of stories today. What else? <sighs> Talk to me. That, that that was all that I had prepared. Yeah, I didn't want to right. talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to go back and find some of my pictures because it's got me a little pumped up now. Because uh, man, I remember those times just doing the the fire walks and glass walks and 
we did one where we we bent a rebar with that little soft point right there in your neck uh bent arrows with our necks um i've went through a lot of that stuff and uh you look back and you're like why the heck did i do that but man just just this conversation today reminded me because it was it was just that simple fact of um learning how to be a better leader but also putting yourself through the fire right um man you, you got me thinking right now on what what we're going to talk about next week i'm really kind of stoked about this this is good i'm glad i was able to jump on here today <laughs> yeah i want you know i wanted to get some people thinking about going through that refiner's fire a little bit better yeah you know? um oh by the way yeah. romancing the stone was not in the 90s my friend it was, it was in 1984 80s. i was six years right. old <laughs> i re i remember it seeing oh my it gosh. when it first came out and i thought it was cool but i i'm gonna say i probably have seen it but now i'm, I'm definitely gonna have to go watch it so <laughs> yeah well when you get to the when you get to the part where danny devito hops it shows him hopping and going across the the hot coals yeah it's not danny devito's feet jumping across those coals it's my friend yeah. ted's feet okay and that was filmed in london they uh they shipped or flew him over for um him just to set up that scene Cool. and have it all ready to go and he actually did hop across hot coals it wasn't fake it was very interesting pretty sweet yeah he's a very interesting guy yeah sounds like it told told me his best friend we're sitting at dinner one night and he told me his best friend was uh david copperfield oh yeah <laughs> yeah and i'm like oh I remember when he made the Statue of Liberty disappear and said sitting across from me, my daughter's sitting next to me and he, he just looks at me real cocky. He says, I came up with how to do that. And I'm like, no <laughs> way. He says, I was there and I was part of the crew. And he's, he starts counting in his head. He says that was done in the, whatever year it was. And he starts counting. He's like 21 years. I can tell you how I, how we did it. And I'm like, what's that? 21 years. What does that mean? He says, I, I had a 20 year silence agreement. Oh, that I signed. And he says, everybody that was there in person, including the audience all had a 20 year silence agreement. And so, it was pretty interesting, but that's for another day. Yeah. So now I know I, how they did it. Shay, oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. I have to come and, up to your place for a cigar and a bourbon. <laughs> I, uh, so I was in 2012, Shane and I went to go see David Copperfield at, uh, what was he at? MGM's. What is it? Anyway. Um, and I got chosen to be part of the show. And so I figured out, you know, the, the trick where everybody's on the stage and all of a sudden, everybody's disappeared there's like 20 people on the stage on three different levels that was the trick i was part of uh i guess i could say what it is because i never signed a non-disclosure or anything it was just this weird thing where man should i reveal it should we talk about it yeah no you know what maybe? let's leave everybody hanging let's until next okay, week let's leave it hanging yeah yeah <laughs> maybe come back next week and maybe i'll reveal how the trick was done how he makes like 30 people disappear on the stage yeah yeah, yeah cliffhanger for next cool. week so how was psa you just got back from psa yeah psa was pretty good um a lot of cool training um uh, the the infamous two and one from ge was there and that was all the rave and all the talk you know it's been in the uh, the rv world for quite a long time you know having that two and one uh washer dryer but i don't know i mean i'm still old school give me the speed queen or something and give me two different ones set side by side because uh you know they say you know an average load is going to take you like two hours but our average load to close you know this thing sitting in front of me is not the xl version it's the normal version it's like yeah that wouldn't do our laundry at our house now with six people in our house <laughs> so right. anyway average of two hours but yeah it was pretty good uh, a lot of good conversations uh we had a booth there and got to meet quite a few new vendors and 
Um, yeah, it was it, it was interesting. You know, the the leadership aspect. You you quickly, I, I think when you go to a lot of vendor shows, you you quickly find out who lines up with your core values and who you'd want to do business with and who you wouldn't want to do business with. And so um, you, you figure that out pretty quick. I did good. So as far as I'm, I'm not a gambler, right? So my biggest part of gambling is I like to play poker. And the reason I like to play poker is because I get to sit with a bunch of guys, sometimes gals, and we just get to shoot the breeze, right? And we get to talk and have a good conversation. That's why I like poker. So I went and played a little bit of a cash game. Um, they were getting ready to have a tournament. I would have loved to jump in the tournament, but we had a banquet uh, on uh, the evening, so I wasn't able to jump in it. But So I walked away from Las Vegas only losing $158. So I think I did pretty darn good, right? I'm the type, if I do go you know, gamble or something, I, I'll usually take two or $300, and if I lose it, great, I quit. If I double it up, then I quit. So, <laughs> And I'm pretty good about sticking with it. Worst customer. Yep, a hundred percent. I've <laughs> never been comped for anything, and uh, I have never gotten a free room because I haven't lost that much money because I'm not a gambler. <laughs> That's so, funny. Yeah. So, what was what was your biggest takeaway? What was or what impressed you the most? Uh they had so the speaker that they had. Um, and I'll have to find the picture. The speaker they had was actually from our area. His name is Del Reader. Um, our so our office is in Energy, Illinois, which is connected to Heron, Illinois. Heron, Illinois used to have Maytag, um, a huge manufacturing facility right here in Heron, and it was Maytag, Norge, and and anyway, it shut down and devastated our area. Like there was a lot of people that lost their jobs, and the economy in our area just tanked for quite a long time. But Dell Reader was the uh, main speaker at the banquet and just to be able to see and talk and get to this guy's done some really cool stuff, you know, um, with several different companies. And uh, he had one of the things that he popped on there because he was part of NSA. And he said, you know, the NSA vision at one point. Um, and it's our whitehead was the guy who said this I, I, as the, the NSA vision was to remove crappy service from the face of the earth. <laughs> so I think that was my, my big takeaway from PSA was remove crappy service from the face of the earth. I know that sounds I'm weird, but that's, that's Jason. That's Jason <laughs> for you. <laughs> you know, Good luck I, that. As an electrician, I was always on a mission to remove crappy service from the face of the earth and and always give that above and beyond experience to my yeah. clients, right? To my customers. And you call it you know, elevating the industry. Yes, I'm <laughs> working on elevating the industry. And so uh, we're still taking that to my office help. You know, we want to remove crappy service from the face of the earth. And I, I'm sorry, there are so many companies out there who just, I know they have their place. But it's hard for you as my client when somebody calls up and they get somebody who's just surly and mean or can't speak English very well or they get an answering machine. You know, that is not elevating the industry. That's not getting rid of crappy service. And for starters, if you ever get that from my business, I want to know about it. Right. Shane and I want to know about it because we're going to fix it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to preach. So we'll just leave that one alone for another. Yeah. I've got, I've got the same thing in our, in, in my industry as well. I mean, yeah. um, I've been guilty of it, you know, and it, I had to learn and make it my, make it my purpose to be better. Right. Yeah. And that's what we are here for, for all of you watching. Um, we want to walk alongside you and help you grow and help you be better. You know, yeah. and I, I had to learn a long time ago. You can't do that alone. You, you don't just wake up one day and say, you know what, today's the day I'm going to be better and I'm going to do it all alone. And I'm going to do it by myself. And I've got all the skills to do it and all the knowledge. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. So you need help. We all need help. We're continually growing. No one has all the answers all the time, but as long as you're growing together in the community 
and always striving to achieve something greater, then how can you not end up ultimately doing it? Yep. I mean, you can't fail. You may have, have some setbacks along the way, but you won't fail as long as your, your goals are in line with what you want to achieve. Yeah. <clears throat> so good stuff. All right. With that being said, we want to walk alongside you at the Service Alliance Group. Join the mastermind. Today is the last day that you can sign up for the fall mastermind. So we're going to screenshot that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same thing I was earlier. So um, we want to walk alongside you. And quite honestly, we are 99% full. We've only got, I think, two or three spots remaining. So that's cool. Get signed up. Um, we're going to close the... that out today as soon as those spots are filled. So it may not even last until midnight. But um, what's that date? I, I'm pretty sure. What's that? What's the date? We start October 7th. It's oh, for four the mastermind. Weeks, every Saturday in October. Well, that's cool. So, oh, so this is online, virtual only. Virtual only. We're doing it through Zoom. Cool. All right. We're walking through some presentations. We're going to go into breakout rooms. We're going to, you're going to learn from your own groups. You know, they're, they're going to be small groups broken out. So everybody's going to learn something different from each other. And we're going to walk alongside you through this process. And every time that we've, every time I've been into a mastermind myself or led a mastermind, I'll tell you what, I've learned a lot leading them, but it's amazing watching others grow. Yeah. You know, as I facilitate one, even if, even if I'm not leading it, I just facilitate it and just keep everybody on track. And it's amazing watching what these guys learn from each other hmm. and how much knowledge is, is in a room, you know? Yeah. And you're like, like some of these people come into these things and they're like, yeah, I'm stupid. I'm, I don't, you're way smarter than me. I'm going to, I'm going to be feeling like the idiot in the group. And I'll tell you what, some of those guys have the best insight. Yeah. And they don't even realize how much knowledge they actually have. Yeah. Um, Gasper was in a, our last one. Like he says right here, they're great. And you also make new friends. That's for sure. Yeah. I made new friends, you know, um, just facilitating my one little group earlier this year. So, I mean, it, they're great. I'm in, I'm in a mastermind right now for one of my, um, it, for my business in marketing and, I'm meeting new people all the time yeah. and I'm learning a lot, you know, and I'm bringing a lot of my expertise to the table too, that they, that they don't know. So it's like, we're all growing together and I love it. So come on, join the mastermind. It's not a shameless plug. It's, it's really a good thing to be a part of. And how much um, is it? It is only a hundred bucks unless for you're four weeks for four weeks. And if you're a, an all access member, you get 50% off. So it's only 50 bucks. So it's a win-win. That's pretty good. Yeah. So cool go to servicealliancegroup.com. You'll see the banner at the top of the website and the link for the registration is there. Go ahead and jump in. Cause like I said, we really do only have a few spots left. That's awesome. That's all I got good today. It's good you stuff. You got anything good else? Um, no, no, I'm good. Yeah, mine's are clear. Awesome. My, mine's clear or empty. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think my mind oh, was empty me. when we started. We, we had our quarterly planning meeting yesterday, and today we have our annual planning meeting. So that coming right off the road of almost 4,000 miles, my butt hurts. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I've been doing a lot of sitting, so I have to get up and, and stretch a little Stand bit. Stand on so. your head this time. Yeah, and then, uh, <laughs> so anyway, 
you know what? So. Fire walk. Get 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 some charcoal set up. You know, some some match light. And don't tempt me for a good time. Just saying. Oak. I don't got lots pine. of pine. Oak. No, I got lots of pine. We'll make pine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll we'll see you next week, where Jason will continue his conversations and about and David Copperfield. About I'm, I'm going to let you know David's secret. Yeah, we'll we'll tell all the secrets of David. <laughs> Do you, will you ever get to tell how he made the Statue of Liberty disappear? I I can, but it's it's kind of a visual thing that you have to show somebody. Yeah, you can't yeah. really just describe it and have someone understand as much. But hmm, okay, um, I could try, but we'll see. Wait, that, I'll think about it. What's the Yoda saying? Try or try not or do or I don't know. There the, is no the, try. Yeah. Try. Only what, there is no try. There is no try, only do. Is that is that the Yoda right. saying? Something like that. Yeah, okay. Now you got me thinking. I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna post that. And we'll come next try week you with must. more Yoda Steve, you will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See us All next right. week, you will. Yeah. Have a uh do or do not, there is no try. That's the one I'm yeah, looking for. It. The Empire Strikes Back. All right. Yeah. Make it a great week. Have a good one, guys.